How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Before this video gets started, I want to kind of talk about it because I didn't, I forgot I kind of to talk about it in the video, but today you're going to see a bobcat get trapped and harvested. So, quick disclaimer, it is legal in the state that I'm, I'm trapping in. They're not protected or anything like that. There's a limit of three. This being my first one. Super excited. The main reason why we're doing this is predator control. What you guys need to understand, I know there's going to be a lot of bobcat lovers. I love them too. I mean, like, absolutely gorgeous creatures. I want nothing more than, you know, for them to thrive and stuff. The issue is with having chickens, ducks, baby goats, livestock, stuff like that, it's predator control. That's what you got to do. Mainly coyotes, but also bobcats. And it being that we caught a bobcat in my backyard, literally a hundred yards from the animals means that we're doing our job at protecting our livestock. So please, please, please chill in the comments about it. If you, if you have an issue with it, I understand and I respect your opinion, but you also need to respect mine in the sense that I'm trying to protect the livestock that we've got. So just keep in mind, it's predator control, nothing else. That's the main reason we're doing it. We're not going to some random field and trapping them and hunting them for no reason. There's actual purpose behind this. So please chill in the hate comments down below. Enjoy the video. Shoo, how's it going folks? Welcome back to another episode of Fish with Flair. Today, we've got something special planned. We are gonna do some more trapping. I know you guys probably, well, some of you guys might be tired of the trapping. Some of you guys are probably loving it, but we are gonna be doing a little backyard trapping, which Slayman and I have attempted this one other time and epically failed and caught absolutely nothing. But I feel like we're onto something now. We've got more experience, I guess. We've trapped one Kaya, we've trapped an otter. We've also trapped a badger, lots of raccoons, lots of possums. We're, we're well on our way here. And uh, we're gonna do some backyard trapping because last night I was actually in my bedroom and I heard coyotes and I'm like wow dude they gotta be really close if I can hear them. I ran outside and they were literally down there like my house is up there they were down there we could hear them and I left the chicken coop open I've been leaving it open uh just like that the permit fence I've been leaving it open pretty much for the last week I put on some boots and ran down here shut it just to make sure the chickens didn't die and they didn't they're good look at them they're all doing just fine even quacky what up Tom how's it going Tom look at Tom Tom's just chilling he's all plumed out and stuff quacky Tyrone, what up, buddy? How's it going, bud? All right, see you later. Chickens, how are you guys doing? You guys just chilling? Tom, you holding down the fort? Good to hear it. Anyways, as you can see, the chickens are doing fine, so I locked them back up and then let them out this morning. I'm gonna start locking them up at night, but since we started hearing them, they were literally down here. And uh, Slamin and I, we went down there and looked. It didn't really look like there was many tracks or anything like that, but they were down there. We've seen tracks down there before. So we're going to be doing some backyard trapping. And uh, later today, I'm getting a whole package, like a giant unboxing package from uh, a website where I got all of my trapping gear. And we're going to go through it. And we're also going to show you guys kind of how I prepare traps, snares, stuff like that. You want to get the oil off them, might even wax them. You guys will see that later. We don't have the package yet. We're going to wait for it. But we're, right now, we do have some snares. So we're going to set out some snares first. But before we do that, I'll How's it going, buddy? How are you guys doing? How's it going, donkey? How's it going, donkey? How's it going, Karen? What up, little guy? Look at the babies over there. They're just giving it a dangle. All the animals of the farm are good. You guys want some grain? I bet you do want some grain. You guys have some hay still. I'm not too worried about it. We'll give you some grain later today, all right? Not right now, a little bit later. Anyway, so we gotta come make sure. Look at all these guys. What are you, what are you guys doing? I feel like we're under attack. You look out there, there's just freaking animals absolutely everywhere. Look at Tom. Tom's strutting his stuff right now. Tom is an absolute beefcake. But anyways, um, I think there's really nothing down here. I just wanted to make sure all the animals are good. We got Rick and Felipe. They're always just chilling. Everything else is good. Everything's got food. Everything's got water. I just came down here. Just to give you guys a quick little update on the farm. Just letting you know. Everything's still alive. Knock on wood. Oh, look at them. Are they cuddling right now? You guys cuddling? Hi, buddy. How's it going? Anyways, everything's good on the farm. I've actually had to throw some gas in the mule. And then we're headed out. We're going to set some snares first. We've got six five no five five snares um that we're gonna go set out now and then we're gonna go down to the farm check all those traps because we got a bunch of traps out there and if i'm not gonna really take you guys along tom 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 he's gonna beat slayman's ass look at him look at him get him get him tom you go get him tom go get him tom beat his ass tom go get him get him tom <laughs> All right, we don't, we don't condone animal fighting here, okay? All right, don't you think we've got this animal fighting ring? Tom's just trying to square up on Slayman, all right? I don't know if he's trying to mate with him or what the strat is there, but you know what? Tom, Tom's doing Tom things. Anyways, as I was saying, is we're gonna go set snares and we're gonna go down the farm, check those traps. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all the trap checking. We've been doing a lot in these videos. If we get anything, I'll show you. If we don't, I'm not really gonna show you anything. Um, and then we're gonna grab some more trapping stuff and come back. And then hopefully that package will be here. We'll unbox it. We'll spend tonight preparing everything. And then tomorrow we're gonna go set the rest of the traps and hopefully we can get something. We're also gonna 
going to look for some bobcat. That's another thing that I believe is out here. When it snowed and when the pond froze, there was tracks everywhere and they were really small. They look like dog prints, like, like, like a coyote, but they were small and you couldn't see the nails, meaning probably a bobcat. So I'm thinking there's some bobcats way up in the woods. You guys haven't even been over there. I haven't showed you that, guys that, so you'll see that today. A part of my property that you guys have never been to. Um, it's super, super thick wooded area and there's going to be these really tight trails and that's where we're going to set all the traps. Anyways, stay tuned. Shoo! All right, folks. Well, we made it to the first spot. We uh, we had to get the, the snares prepped. We got the deer stops on and everything. One thing you got to make sure about is you got to make sure you're following your state regulations. There's in it by state, it completely varies and stuff like that. Um, in the state we're trapping in today, these are in fact legal, but um, there are certain states that don't allow these, certain states that do. So if you guys are going to trap in general or especially snare, make sure you read your regs because they're all different in different states. So don't just look at what I'm doing and do what I do because you guys not be, might not be trapping the same place I am. But anyways, this is where Slam and I saw the coyote tracks. See, there's, well, actually, there's two trails. Well, there's actually four. Now that I'm looking at it, there's actually four. Uh, I don't think we'll put four out, but there's, uh, there's, this is from our, our UTV going, but we saw, I think it was this one that we saw the tracks, wasn't it? It was this right side one. It wasn't this one. And this one looks heavier used. If you, if you look at them, this one looks heavier used. So we're going to put the snare here. We'll probably put it kind of towards the bottom right here since it's kind of pinched off here. We'll just do one for now. And then we're going to head to, like I said, we're going to head to a spot that you guys have never seen before way up in the woods, um, away from here, just because the house is here, even though we've seen coyote tracks and we heard coyotes over there just last night. Um, I do want to kind of spread them out and, and set up traps where we've never trapped before. So we're gonna get the first one set out right here and hope that we can get some Yodis down. All right, so we're gonna do this a little bit different than what we've been doing. Well, again, we've got most of our good snares and cable restraints are already set out. So we're kind of using what I've got left before this package arrives, but we're gonna set a few of them out. So we don't have the proper stakes for them. We don't really have the proper setting uh, stands for them, but we're gonna make it work. You don't have to have all these fancy tools and stuff to set them. We're gonna kind of show you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna just kind of make a makeshift rig with what with what we've got and uh, we'll see if it works. Let's do it up here because it looks like there's a trail. So you can see the trail kind of cuts here. So I want to go further up maybe to like here. That way you catch them before they go off in the split. So what you'll do, one big important thing is if you're setting snares, stay on the trail. Don't go off to the side because you're going to end up making something that an animal could go around potentially. You want to find where it chokes in the most. This isn't great, but what we'll do is we'll go grab some brush and stuff and uh, and choke it up some more. So there's these things, which these things are designed to go on the ground just like this. But to me, that seems way too low. Like for, for what we've got going on here, which you, you're going to want your snare to be about, about like that. I'll, I'll double check it here in a second to make sure we're, we're legal on that set. But it seems like it's too, these sets are a little too low to the ground. Because if it's like this, this is on there. You're pretty much on the ground. I don't like that. So this is just, I think this is nine or 11 wire. So what I'm going to do, again, this isn't what you're really supposed to do. I'm going to bend this out, make it straight. So we've got more to deal with here. Then take this and put this in the ground just like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to want to take your snare. There's this little plastic, there's this little plastic piece here. Just slides right up on there just like that. All right. So once your snare, again, you want to make sure your rigs are good uh, as far as how big this this opening can be because it, it, it varies per state also varies kind of where you're putting it stuff like that so you want to make sure that you're eating your eggs you're going to want this thing about i think a nine to 12 inches is what they say which is about this a little bit a little bit longer than this so from the ground to the top of my thumb is right where it's at now so i want to bring this up just a hair not a whole lot right there seems about right the other thing you want to do that trap lord jake taught me is he says you want to load your snare which means it's kind of hard to do because i got this bum finger still but you basically want to pinch pinch the cable right here and and, and kind of put some force on it and run all the way down basically what you're doing is you're bending this so right now the cable is running out you kind of want it running a little bit more down so i'm going to try to do it even though my finger's a little whack but basically just like that just kind of run it down it just kind of straightens this side out and then slide this back up just like that now you see how that thing if i straighten that out it's already kind of going out of downhill so basically if this thing gets tapped like this see how it's kind of automatically slides down you want it to be just like that you don't want them to have to really tug and pull on it to get it kind of set but again this wire is not ideal um, in my opinion, I like the other stands better, but you know, for what I'm doing, it'll it'll work. So just go ahead and load this, load this guy up, about like that. 
pretty much gonna be good to go. Yep, so now you can see it's again, it starts off kind of at that bent angle there. You wanna make sure your loop is as big as it possibly can be legally, like I said, inches wise, uh, but you wanna make sure it's not in some type of weird shape. Looks pretty good to me. Set that off to the side. The only thing I don't like about this wire is see how it kind of wobbles in the wind a little bit. So you gotta be careful about that. But then uh, we don't have earth anchor stakes, which is what we've been using. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a piece of T rebar, just like this, which if you drive this thing all the way to the ground, there's no way a kayak's getting it out. So. I'm not super worried about it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here away so it's kind of tucked up. Drive this thing down and then take your hammer and pound it all the way down in the ground. That way you don't have to worry about anything getting out. They're also way easier to get out than uh, the earth anchors. Just like that. And you wanna make sure you hide your, your wires as good as you possibly can, all your cables and stuff. So what I do is I try to make like a little, little hole for them just cover them up with grass as good as you possibly can. The other thing that I'm gonna do, maybe not on the next set of snares that I get, but on the one after that, so I'm gonna try dipping them, dyeing them, just because these things seem a little bit shiny to me. They make some dye and stuff that you can make them kind of turn black, brown, stuff like that. So I'm gonna try that, but for now, that's about, that's about what you want. It's about the perfect little snare setup. About nine to 12 inches off the ground. Nice big loop. We've got the deer stop on there. Make sure you're following your regs. And she's hot, she's fire. She's ready to fire, she's ready to go. One down, a few more to go. Uh, how's it going, Quacky? Quacky, everyone's missing your quack today. Oh, what up, chicken? How's it going? Wow, you look like a bag of wieners. Chicken's molting, and uh, does not look good. But uh, we're, we're at the next spot here. This is where we heard the coyotes last night, and I came down and shut up the coop and stuff. An area that you guys, well, you've seen in the squirrel hunting video uh, with Millie. Slamming and I and Millie came down here and hunted just a little bit, but this is a really cool area. I don't really ever come down here. It's, every time I come down here, I'm like, wow, I don't wanna come down here more, but I want to, clear this out all these trees i want to clear this out and make this some type of pasture maybe have pigs that's what they used to have in there the old owners of this had pigs over there it's a really cool area and it's flat there's not a whole lot of flat ground on my property as you guys probably know um but this is it's not flat here but over there it's a little bit more flat flat enough and there's a, there's already a shelter for them too so this spring i want to come down here wipe out some of these trees not all of it just what's on this little area all that back stuff all this stuff can all stay and be habitat for squirrels and whatnot but i want to uh clear that out and make that maybe the pasture for the pigs and stuff and uh because right now it's just it's too shaded to really grow any grass so you guys can tell it's just like moss and stuff so i think we can get some grass growing if we open it up a little bit but we're gonna look for some trails we've seen some coyote tracks back here before during that squirrel video we saw a few tracks but it wasn't super prominent there's a fence line the the property my fence is up here and from what i usually find is a lot of coyotes travel fence line so we're gonna go there and see if we can find a trail to set a snare on so this is the trail we found kind of runs like this runs here and then it splits one goes that way one goes that way then it meets back up together um but i think if we stuck it here we've got a lot of grass that we could fluff up on both sides i'm thinking like right here right before that split put one right here this is just in the middle on the bottom basically anything that's walking in this area is pretty much gonna cross right in here again I'll show you the finished product Shoo! there is the final product ladies and gentlemen this is one of the better ones Simon found this little curly stick we kind of put some sticks right here too to kind of guide them so they couldn't kind of dip out over there and they're pretty much it's a pinch again it's a pinch but for coyotes um, I've got no problem thinking that they'll go through it deer might be like oh hell I don't want to go through that tree which is what we want we don't want to catch no deer we don't need no deer knocking this thing off coyote wise they should be able to go right through it having all this brush is a immediately gonna make them kind of duck their head a little bit and they should hit it right there as they're moving forward it'll cinch right down boom got them we got one more to go folks and then we're headed down to the farm we're gonna go check the traps hopefully we got a coyote bobcat raccoon possum otter badger i think that's pretty much all the fred fox hopefully we got one of those things to show you guys but we're gonna get one more set up and i'll show you the finished product Shoo! look at this one i like this one too this one looks really good we've got sticks again kind of overhanging it that way deer maybe they'll just turn around or they'll just knock the whole thing over which is probably what's gonna happen anyway but perfect little height right there about 12 inches, 9, 12 inches. Perfect little circle. It's already kind of going down at a slant. And if you can see, there's one, two, three, four trails that come from the roads like, I don't know, 50 yards that way. But that's where they're coming from. They're coming off the road. And it all bottlenecks down to here. And then it goes and then it splits up into a bunch. And then we've got that other one over there. So again, the key is you want to find the bottlenecks. You want to find where all the traffic's going. You don't want to have to put out one, two, three, four snares. You put out one right where everything's going to go. That way you save time, you save money, and a little bit more effective that way. Anyways, we're headed down to the farm. And uh, if it gets interesting, I'll show you guys. I'll take you guys along with me. If not, well, we're just going to grab some more supplies and come back here. And hopefully that package will be here and we'll do some unboxing. Stay tuned. Boom. I don't know why I just did that. Anyways, how's it going, folks? We made it back to the house. And look, we got two giant freaking boxes here filled with traps. We're going to go ahead and cut these guys open. I kind of forgot what I ordered. This is my biggest trap order purchase 
yet. And since I've placed this order, I've probably doubled the amount of stuff that's in here. But this is this is the Kager, the Kager, um, what do you call it? The Kager order, basically. This is gonna have a lot of the good stuff in it. A lot of stuff that we're gonna use tomorrow. Number one, we've got some latex pan cover. So this is something that Trapper J uses. So I was like, hey, I'll try it. He's got, you know, 25 kayaks. I've got like one. So, and I haven't even done it with a foothold, but I was gonna look at this real quick. Oh, these are beefcakes. Oh yeah. So this is uh, like a pan cover, but it covers the whole trap. Something new, he tries it, he, he tried it and he likes it. So figured I'd try it. Got, that's a 24 pack, I believe of those. Oh, Millie wants out. Millie, this is, this is all new trapping stuff. This is good. This is, I don't know what that is. This is snares on snares, boys. On freaking snares, on more snares. We got more snares and we got more freaking snares. We got six dozen snares. And I just ordered another six dozen last night. And I'm wondering why would anyone ever need 12 dozen snares? Um, well, the ones I found last night already came dyed, which I've noticed these are freaking shiny as hell. And uh, so I could just return all these, which is probably the smart thing to do. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll return some of these that I'm thinking about. Maybe I'll keep like a dozen. That way we've got some to, to use tomorrow. Yeah, I'll probably just return the rest of them. But I found some that were already dyed. So these are snare shop snares. But I found some, I believe it's Dakota line. None of this is sponsored by the way. Snares and they come, they call them ghosts or something. They come dyed, which is what I want because they're a little bit darker. So anyways, in here we got hella earth anchors, boys. This is what we use to stake down traps, snares, pretty much everything. Now we've got pretty much an unlimited amount. This was, I want to say this was six, six dozen or five dozen. And then I ordered another five dozen like last night again. Bunch of them that way we can pretty much set as many traps as we need. Now I got a hundred pack of these S hooks. This is what we connect these snares and the uh, earth anchors to. And I got a hundred pack of these J hooks. This is what you connect the earth anchors to the footholds. We've got that going for us. So this must have been the snare package because this is pretty much everything that has to do with snares. Right here, we've got the snare supports. This looks like a dozen, and I think I ordered one, two, three, three dozen so far. I'm pretty sure I ordered a little bit more of that, but these are the snare supports. So you drive these in the ground, extend out, you put the snare on it. There you go. Box number one, come freaking complete. Box number two, this is all the footholds here. This is all the good stuff right here. Oh yeah, two five pounders. Trap wax. We're gonna be using this probably tonight to wax all the traps after we boil them. And we've got something in here. What is this? What's this strap? Oh, this thing smells. Woo! Hell fire! This is what uh this is what Trapper J uses. Yeah, you smell that? Yeah, that's the good stuff there. So we got that. There's gonna be some more. I bought a lot of lure, a lot of bait. We're gonna try some new stuff. Some bobcat stuff. This is good. This is uh I think it's the urine or just says hot shot bobcat. So we'll be using that. And this is what, um, like I said, Trapper J uses for his bobcat set. So got a lot of stuff for bobcats as well. Ooh, I think this actually came for free because I ordered so much stuff. Oh, what's that strat? Why don't we have these? Wait, do what? Shut up. I have never seen that in my life. I bet these are probably pretty expensive. But dude, that was sick. I had no idea that's what was gonna happen. Dude, you don't have to, you don't have to like put the dog over anything and it's set. Okay, I don't know what these are. This was free and uh, I'm gonna buy a lot more of these. That's way easier than the ones I use. Next up, we've got all traps in here. Yeah. Boom, look at that goodness. One dozen of these. These are the Bridger number three dog list. This is the, these are the traps uh, I've been using. I really, really like these. They got a nice big pan dog list, just like that. That's a dog list dog proof, which is really neat. Um, we got a dozen of these, so we're gonna go ahead and dice. There's definitely way more somewhere, uh, not traps wise. Those are all my snares, all my traps, all the big stuff. But I ordered like, I don't know how much of this, this type of stuff, like all the jars of stuff. Macy said there was stuff in the mailbox that smelled, so it could be in there. Um, but that's not really all that important for this video. I got a bunch of different bait. Anyways, I know I'm trying to talk fast, get through this video. We are gonna go fire up the burner and get the water going so we can boil all of this stuff. I wanna boil everything on a boil. Earth anchors, the snares, the footholds, and then we're gonna wax these. And I'm gonna attempt to dye some of these snares. I found some dye that came in one of these kits, so we're gonna try that too. Anyways, you guys just sit back, relax. We're gonna do some time lapses. Stay tuned.
Shee-hee-hee-hee. Well, folks, there you have it. We made, we made, we couldn't figure out. You guys saw we were on our phone a lot. We were looking up things about trapping. Should we dye them? Should we not? Should we wax them? Should we not? We decided to not wax the <laughs> footholds. What's that strap? You, were you teasing him? No, come here. Come here. What up, Finn? You saw you guys, apparently Slam yeah. said that everyone thought Finn was dead. Finn's yeah. chilling. Finn's just an, he's an inside dog. He wants to be an outside dog. The problem is his fur is so curly that he just gets all these like cockaburrs in it. And it's just an, an absolute nightmare. And then his tail ends up, his tail ends up, hey, come, 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 come. his tail ends up looking like that. Bag of wieners. But he loves being outside. He actually likes being outside more than this guy right here. But you're a little bit more suited for the outdoor life. You're a wannabe. Sorry, right, buddy. Anywho, we decided not to wax those traps because I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, okay, the main reason why you wax something is to keep it from rusting. It makes it fire faster, but the reality is it makes it keep, it keeps it from rusting. Um, but then if you want to dye it, you, it has to be a little bit rusty for the dye to adhe adhere. That makes sense. And since we've only got a couple more weeks of trapping season, why don't we just boil them? We got the grease. Well, we, we okay, here's the deal. We, we attempted to get the grease off. We just tried boiling it in water. We ended up changing the water four times and there's still absolute gobloads of grease on these traps. I don't know what the strat is. Here's my theory. Two weeks left. Let's just throw them out there and see what freaking happens. We don't catch anything. We don't catch anything. But what I do know is by the end of this season, they'll be a little bit rusty. They'll be seasoned. A lot of the grease will probably be worn off. And then we're going to take everything, every single one of our traps, go to the car wash and power wash every single trap, dry them, and then put them in a storage unit, to, like a like a bin of some kind, throw them on the shelf. And then next fall, we're going to go through the process again. So they'll be a little bit rusty. So what we'll do is we'll make sure all the grease is off. We'll degrease them. We'll dye them. We'll wax them. We'll do it the correct way. But since we don't have a whole lot of time, the traps really weren't cooperating with getting degreased and stuff, then we decided. That's what we're going to do. So we're throwing just boiled, still greasy traps out tomorrow. The snares, we decided to just use baking soda. Um, we literally just dumped an entire thing of baking soda and boiled it, which is what Trapper Jay said he does, which a lot of people say they do, which basically just takes off the grease. It actually takes the shine off just a little bit too. And we figured we'll try that. And then um, I'm going to send back, we only did a dozen of those. And then I'm sending back the other five dozen that I bought. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just kind of shiny because Jake told me, Trapper or Jake told me about some that come already died. And so they're black and they look way better. So I ordered those. It was like three days ago, but they're not going to be here till next week. I'm tired of talking. I'll see you guys in the morning. Shoo! It is the next day, folks. How's it going? Good morning. We got to go check them. Cable restraint traps uh, that we set up, but we've got a bunch more. Like you said, last night you guys saw us do it all. The traps came out still greasy, but we're going to throw them in the ground and just call it a day. But we got slamming over there, and we got John. John's back. John's been gone for Lord knows how long, but he's finally back. He decided he wants to join the Trap Lord squad out here. He missed the badger, the otter, and the coyote. He missed all the cool stuff. He has literally not seen us trap anything besides possums and raccoons. But before we do that, I need to give these animals a little bit of hay. I'm gonna see if I can get just a bundle of hay and give them give them something to eat today. Karen, I got freaking hay. Mm -hmm. Shoo! All right, I'm gonna give them a little, a little bit of grain too. They could, they deserve a little bit of grain. You guys want some freaking mealworms too? Here you go, Marty. There you go. Chickens got mealworms now. They're good. A bit of grain. Oh yeah, come up here, Karen. You gotta ch chew the rest of your food first. All right, there you go. Oh yeah, Karen. Karen's nice and well trained. Look at her. You're just like a freaking dog. All right, over here, kid. Donkey, donkey, right here. Hey, buddy, right here. Hey, hey, right here. There you go. There you go, Junior. You eat that grain, buddy. Perfect. Everything's got grain. Everything's got hay. Simon was on water duty. Time to go check the traps. Well, nothing in cable restraint number one. See anything in that second one? Nope. Nothing in the second one. Okay, so we got two foothold traps from yesterday that we're gonna put in the ground. Where did, where were we thinking? We were thinking maybe there, but then also I'm looking, this is the main funnel, right? Everything funnels into here, so what if you just stuck it right here? We get, let's just do one here. That way if anything walks down this main path, get you anything that's over there. Cause we've seen coyote tracks that ran there, but I think even if it was here, they would still be able to smell it, so. And that's north, so the north wind would blow it oh down there which is where all the coyotes are. So we're gonna go ahead and get one set up here. We've got all the goods, all the dry dirt. We got some new bait from yesterday that we're gonna try out that Hellfire and uh, we're gonna see what happens.
Look. Or do you think that was Millie? Right. Oh, that was definitely Millie. Yeah, that's probably Millie. It's pretty. That's a pretty decent this size puppy. Though. Oh, that's. Ah, God, oh, we need dude. to quit. We need to quit bringing Millie where we're trapping because now I'm now I'm now I'm like all. Uh oh. Oh no, it's still up. Okay. That snare's still up. Well, that one up there. Kind of the one. This is what freaks me out. You guys want to? You guys want to see us? Here's what freaks me out. This is Millie's track, 100%. You can see the claws. This one has no claws, which is traditionally a bobcat. If there is a cat with that size of paws around here, that is a mountain lion. And that is not a bobcat. You see what I mean? Why would, that's 100% Millie. I've seen yeah. hers enough. Why would that one not have the claw prints? What about this one right here? No claw prints at all. Zero. Millie's very defined claw prints. Dude. If that is a cat, we brought a trail camera because because we have to know. So we're gonna on on like the the where we think the cat is gonna be the bobcat. We're gonna put a um, a trail camera that way we can look. But I mean, all of those could be Millie, and for some reason the claws just didn't show up. But as you guys can tell, the difference between those two pretty good. For those of you guys who don't know, bobcat print is not going to have claws because they have claws, but they're retractable, just like your house cat until you declaw them. But coyotes and dogs have claws that are always out. So that's the difference. I was gonna look over here too. Uh, this was, this would have been Millie, I think, coming down here. So I don't know, I don't know. You guys let me know what you guys think. We're gonna go, we're gonna throw on the adventure pack here and we're gonna start hiking. It's gonna kind of suck. We're gonna try to find, we're gonna go up in that timber in the, in the thick, thick stuff and find the trails and then try to set, start setting some traps. We'll probably bring three, four traps up there just so we've got enough. I don't think we got anything though. So let's go set some more bobcat traps. Well, we got done walking. We're not super far. I'll kind of show you guys. There's the pond, parked the mule, walked up this hill. I was just about to go in this thick stuff that looks like a trail there and go up in this thick stuff and look. That would be coyote poop, boys. Now it looks like that could be a trail right there that kind of shoots down. Yeah. We'll just put it right in here. It actually makes it nice. You could, from that road, you could probably see if you had a coyote, which is also nice because walking up here every day, checking it, we're going to do it obviously, but it's kind of a pain. So the more you can see from the road and stuff, the a little bit easier it is to find. We'll definitely have to drop some pins on these ones, but so there could be a trail here, trail there. I would say just put it, what do you think, here? So just an open, try an open, open foothold set right here in this stuff, right by the poop. Where Wherever they're pooping, so where they're walking, which is what you want. Shee look at this one. I like this one a lot, boys. We used that tree um, as backing. It's not very big. It's not like they can get tangled or anything like that, but it was just naturally here because I think this is their path in between these trees. So basically, POV, you're gonna walk down and you can already see the uh, the wool there, the sheep's the sheep's wool. So you're gonna walk down. I made this, I, I built this back up. I don't know what this is. Let me know what this guy is, guys. Like when you pull it up off the ground, it's like this. Is this, is this what they call peat moss? I've heard of that term before, but never seen this, never knew this was on my property, but I built up a rim of that moss right here but then flattened this down so when they walk they're naturally going to want to go here and it's kind of a step down step down to get to that and uh i am feeling very good i say that probably about every single time but i'm feeling good about it somewhere completely different and we're using new lure um we're using that hellfire stuff and it reeks would you boys agree yeah. definitely the most potent stuff we've used yeah. again not sponsored no no ad for these guys but i mean if it works i'll give them all the credit it's uh it's the only thing we've really mixed up but it smells insane we're gonna see if this works i feel good about it we're gonna keep hiking we're gonna load everything back up and keep hiking up in the mountains here this is this is more of a coyote set than a bobcat it could work for a bobcat but you'll see what we do on the the cat sets the cat sets we do we'll put some feathers out and really make it attractive but this was since we saw a poop that i'm like 99.9 percent .9 sure was a coyote it's pretty darn big if it was a cat if it was a cat it was probably a mountain lion um but if we find any signs of where a bobcat might be we'll set we'll do a completely different set you guys will see the difference there but we're gonna keep on hiking see if we can find another trail Look at this. I'm, I'm happy with it. I am really happy with it. This is uh, the first bobcat set that we've put. Dedicated for bobcat in the backyard. We use the three meat bait that we've been using, but we use the hellfire and we use some bobcat, actual bobcat urine. So what we did is we took some feathers and these were some that were in the backyard. We think they were, there's a chicken that we had that was molting. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen that video, but we took some of its longer feathers that were on the ground. These guys are here and you tie it. And this is called the flag. See how it's moving so much? Bobcats anywhere in this area, it's gonna see that. Then we found some white quacky feathers and then even some darker chicken ones or even those might be toms. We don't really know. We literally just, it's a good thing to have the chicken farm and all these birds because they just drop feathers. You pick them up and then we've got a dirt hole set right back there with some bait and that hot 
the hellfire stuff on that stick that's all that red stuff so that lure will kind of linger but if, even if they're back there they're going to see this this motion you know in the with the moonlight and stuff the the traps right here and then what we did is we drug all this dirt out which is what you want you want to make it look like something's here bobcats are more curious um than they are smart i guess and their nose isn't that great either not like a not like a coyote so it's visual you want them to see the flag see the feathers see the dirt then get close then use their nose smell the lure smell the bait boom bobcat trap and slamming was on snare duty and we saw this little trail you guys can see it it's a super super small clearing like there's no way a deer is getting through that past this this little thing here so we figured well it's either a bobcat or a coyote or a raccoon either one i'd be fine snaring any of them i don't know if you could really snare a raccoon it'd be kind of hard i guess but he put it right here that way even if the bobcat comes and it's curious plus this kind of act as blocker for me so that way it guides them in there so we do, do a little one two punch here um but we've got two more footholds and i think three maybe three more snares two more snares um we're gonna try to find some spots for these guys too and get them get them in the ground but so far this is looking good i feel like we're in the area of bobcat if there are any but we need to find some more spots put some traps <laughs> well folks we uh you guys saw the last thing you guys saw was me putting that last foothold in but we did uh off camera again i know you guys are probably tired of seeing it so i put another snare on then we also put um two traps right across the bridge from the pond there's a bridge that goes across the pond there looked like there's two little slides right there again i didn't film it i'll film it maybe tomorrow when we come check them and maybe we'll have something there and i'll explain a little bit better but it's how i caught the otter it's uh, i call it, i think i call it like the staircase of death or something probably not good for youtube but um either way put a couple traps down there and uh we got a total of I think three footholds, maybe four footholds, and a few snares. Enough to kind of get a start. Nothing too crazy. We're going to let them traps just give it a dangle tonight. And, uh, oh yeah, and we put some on the other side too. And we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Shee How's it going, folks? It is the next day. We are going down to check the trap. Slamming. Took off. Go see his girlfriend or something. We don't know what. But I'm with John still. We are going to go check on the old backyard traps. We haven't been down there yet today, so we're going to go venture down there. We got to go climb freaking Mount Everest to go check on those. But I guess I didn't even look. I'm guessing that snare was down. We, <laughs> we had a snare out there, but I didn't see a coyote jumping and holding it checked on the way back. The one thing about it was it was extremely windy last night. So I'm thinking a lot of those cable restraints probably got kachowed and uh, are just probably laying down there and stuff. So we're going to have to read remake those but i don't know i'm hoping we got something especially like that bobcat set we put that camera out there we didn't show you guys that part we put it we put a trail camera up even if there's footprints around there we should hopefully have some cool footage for you guys that's one thing i want to start doing more is putting trail cameras out of traps but again it just trips me out they're aware of like that clicking sound that when they go off and stuff i don't know i'm probably just being superstitious but basically just trying to make up reasons why i'm not trapping anything so i'm trying to kind of eliminate all the factors there but again we did put a trail camera out on the bobcat one just so we could see are there any bobcats in my backyard. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the hill. The old snare got knocked down probably by a freaking deer. You're supposed to wear gloves, folks, but we're just not. It's not really blended in very well, but I don't really know what else to do. Let's hope for the best. Keep moving. This one actually doesn't look touched. That's good. I mean, well, good and bad, I guess. I don't want it to get touched and not catch something, but I also want to make sure stuff is, uh, you know, around it, but bait's still on there, so that one looks good. Remember, we saw the coyote poop, so maybe we'll maybe we'll get a coyote, but not today. Nothing on slam and snare. Nothing on the uh, this foothold. I guess we can review the footage. Maybe we got some deer or something. Nothing. This one this one doesn't look touched either. But I like the I like the spot. But let's see what the camera says has to say. Oh, we got a deer on it. A couple deer. You guys can't see them. They're right there. They're checking it out. See, we made a move. Is that that was on that side see we said that we said that was the deer trail and then that would have been the coyote trail we we we, we uh we were correct but uh close this back up dang this camera works pretty good caught those deer way out there and that means for sure if it caught the deer i'll show you where the deer were it's kind of hard for you guys to see it. the deer were walking it on this path up in there and it caught it so we saw this path deer that path something a little bit shorter that's why slamming put his snare there but i mean that's good we need to start putting cameras out on all of them Cause that'll really that'll teach us a lot as far as what's coming to what how they're acting where they're stepping where we need to do what adjustments we need to make but anyways is that all of them it is all of them wow they went a lot faster than i thought oh wait we got the ones we have the ones down by the animals almost forgot we've got two cable restraints and two footholds down by the animals down to the and we yeah no that's it yeah that's definitely it because we did the yep yeah, okay anyways i'll see you guys down by the animals Shoo! well we just got done checking on the other traps we've got a few final traps to check down yonder we've set some down there i think we did what two cable restraints and two footholds i believe is what we've got left down there but animals are chilling 
What's going on, Tom? Good talk, buddy. Chickens are good. I've been letting them free range. Like, so we haven't had any issues of predators besides the owl incident. Other than that, no problems. They've been. I've been leaving that gate open 24/7. They go in their coop. The ducks haven't died yet. Anyone see Quacky? Where is Quacky? <laughs> Tom, get him, Tom. Kick his ass, Tom. Tom, go get him. He thinks you're slamming. Tom hates slamming. Are they in here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, hey, how's it going, Quacky? How's it going, Tyrone? Quacky, everybody missing your quack. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> I don't know. Quacky lost his quack. I don't know what the I don't know what the strat is. But anyways, animals are good. Rick, Felipe, donkeys. Let's go. Uh, let's go check the rest of the traps. I swear I just saw something here. Oh, we did. It's a bobcat. It's a bobcat. It's a bobcat. It's a bobcat. It's a freaking bobcat. It's a bobcat. We got. Bobcat in the foothold in the backyard. We gotta go get the gun. We gotta go get the gun, bro. We got the bobcat, dude. Getting strapped up for this moment, boys. Even though this isn't probably the gun I'm gonna use to shoot it, but I keep telling myself, hey, you need to wear this gun because you look right. cooler. Things in case things get squirrely here. Your buddy's packing. But this is what I'm gonna try to shoot it with. I called uh, Trap Lord Jake and asked him, where do I shoot this thing? He said, the lungs, if you're trying to mount it or skin it or get the tan or whatever. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I know it's small, so I don't know if I should mount it or if I should just get it tanned. But either way, he said, go for a lung shot, don't, go, don't do a head shot. So we're gonna try to take a lung shot from 25 yards away. If for some reason, something doesn't work. I've got the sidekick right here, so let's go take care of business. He's growling. Oh God. Oh, did you see him? He got a... I can't believe this is in my backyard. Literally 200 yards away from the chickens, the ducks, the goats, everything. Back foot catch, back foot catch. Can you believe that? Dude, he's so pissed. <laughs> Back foot catch, can you believe it? A back foot catch, I feel like that's just crazy. So obviously my placement of trap wasn't ideal, but hey, I mean, whatever works, it works. I don't remember, I need to go, I'll have to go back and watch the video that's like, did we set it really far back? I mean, I'm fine with the back foot catch, a catch is a catch, but dude, these things are nuts. I can't believe, how is this in my backyard, dude? This is crazy, bro. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we dispatched him. I went for a lung shot, super impressed by it. It was a little tough to get the angle of the dangle correctly, but I like it because there's no blood. If you guys saw the coyote video and the otter video, the badger video, basically all those videos, um, blood goes everywhere. We have to wash them off and show you guys the next day. But this is the bobcat. Closer look, like I said, he's uh, he's been dispatched. Gosh dang, look at these teeth, bro. I can't believe this is in the backyard. Like this is just whack to me. I was just telling John, I grew up my entire life thinking these things lived in Colorado or something. Like I had no idea. They're just out in cornfields and stuff. Like in the Midwest, no idea. And we caught this sucker. Absolutely crazy, but I'll show you guys the foot catch. This is on one of the new traps that we uh, we boiled and whatever. So I guess, well, I know their nose isn't as good as a coyote, but for those of you guys that are doubting the, our strat, I guess this worked, but look at their, you see their claws are retractable, dude, they're razor sharp. Just a toe catch, just barely. We got lucky, super, super lucky on this guy. Back foot toe catch. No idea what that strat was. All again, I'll have to rewatch this video to see, but you guys saw in this video how I set it up, if it was too far back, but it did leave a nice steamy that we're gonna pick up. And uh, well, actually we're just gonna re, we'll just put, we, may, we might come back down and do it either tomorrow or a little bit later tonight, or maybe not even show you guys, but we should remake this here, use the steamer next to it and uh, use all the same type of bait and stuff like that, but. I can't believe it. Yeah, see, that's what they're paw, so when you see paw prints of just the little circles, no claw marks, little circles with the pad, that's a bobcat. If you see bigger, not so circular, but more like oval shaped with claws, that is a coyote. So one thing I didn't know is how short their tails were, bro. I thought it was to be like a long cat. Look, at now you can see the spots on them right here. 
That's crazy looking. Absolutely crazy looking. But I am gonna get it mounted. So I think we're gonna we're gonna get this guy out. We'll remake this set and uh we're gonna go to the taxidermist and get this guy mounted. And you guys I'll bring you guys along with me and I'll show you. It's kind of a routine. We're trapping crazy stuff this year. First year of going hard trapping. We've got this, we've got a coyote, we've got a badger and an otter. Didn't didn't mount the the um coyote because I'm already getting one mounted, but all this other stuff is pretty crazy and rare to me at least. So I'm mounting mounting my first one so that way it means something to me. Maybe I know this is maybe a small one maybe it doesn't have like crazy cool spots and stuff being the first one i think it's worth it so anyways see you guys uh at the taxidermist shoo how's it going folks it is the next day well like i said we're going to taxidermist but we got this bad boy tagged and it's been sitting well buddy's been chilling there it's been cold enough it's kept him kept him frozen but i'll show you the tag real quick so you can see when you catch a bobcat or like i'd already did an otter you have to have them tag it so had this guy get tagged and now i'm at the tax and we're gonna see what options there are you know you could do something like what if you did like jumping batting at like a quail or like a what if we did like james pond put james pond up there and like Man. buddy Merck. In memor <laughs> yeah yeah like like a like a little memorial for james pond and like the cat's like up like this and james pond just sitting there like you know chilling just just laying there we're gonna head inside and see what see what we can come up with for the cat i feel like i'm mounting a bunch of stuff this year so it's uh it's interesting to kind of pick the different items and stuff like that but anyways let's uh let's see what see what the options are see what we end up going with and i'll show you guys what up pooch what do you think all right good talk Is that a male or a female? A male. How many bobcats do you guys want to get? You get a good uh, amount? We usually do probably mm, five to ten. A year? Yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking? I don't know. I was going to see what options you guys had. I didn't really have anything in mind. There's a ton of different options for these. Just go through here. Oh shoot. God, there's a lot of them in here. See, that's what I was talking about, jumping up and getting like a pheasant. Dude, there is way too many options for me. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's a lot wow. of options. You're kidding me. She well, folks, we are leaving the taxidermist place. We were at Hunter's Edge Taxidermy. Shout out to Brandon for hooking it up. Super chill dude. Everybody in there was super chill and their mounts looked absolutely in freaking sane. I should have shown you guys a little bit more now that I'm leaving. I'm like, oh, I should have showed you guys all the mounts on the walls, but they did have a bobcat out there that was mounted that looked pretty cool. But I think what we're going to go is kind of like a, originally I'm like, oh dude, jumping, batting at a quail or like a pheasant or something. But like maybe if I catch like an absolute beefcake uh, of one or for the first one, especially with it not being like a really big one. I mean, it's fairly small. There's nothing really super special about it other than the fact that it's a bobcat in the backyard. It's my first one. I didn't want to go super crazy with it. So we're doing like a sneak attack looking one on a piece of wood where it's climbing down like a tree branch or like a log looking thing and it's going to be able to be hung up on the wall that's one thing i want to start doing with basically all my mounts is if they can be up on the wall i want to i want that that's what i want i want them on the wall i don't want them on the floor i feel like floor mounts look cool but like they're so low like when people walk into a room you you see at eye level or a little bit above eye level of stuff on the wall versus on the floor it's like oh hey little buddy down there that's covered in dust not really that cool not bad but uh brand said that he could definitely put it up on the wall so we're gonna do something like it sneaking down mouth closed a very natural looking bobcat but if i trap another one maybe maybe like a beefcake or something like that um then maybe i can go hunting for quail or pheasants in the backyard or kind of around the farm or something if i did that then i could do a jumping one but first we're gonna keep it simple with the wall mount but if you guys are in this area area i'll leave it linked down below if you guys want to go check out hunter's edge taxidermy like i said brandon was awesome everybody in there was awesome and their mounts looked top freaking notch i'm super excited to get it back uh it'll probably be six to twelve months to you what taxidermy is just kind of depends on their schedule and stuff like that but i'm starting to fill fill up the walls here with the fur fill in walls with the fur which is absolutely awesome it's something that again i'm get, just getting into trapping now and the fact that i'm getting all these cool animals like bobcats especially in the freaking backyard can you leave it a backyard bobcat can't even freaking believe that it happened anyways hope you guys enjoyed today's video i thought it was really exciting i thought it was absolutely insane the fact that we got a bobcat in the backyard couldn't believe it and uh if you guys have any other suggestions on what we should try to go trap besides coyotes bobcats stuff like that let me know in the comments section down below if you have any tips on trapping or if you see me do anything wrong also let me know in the comments section down below hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you so much for watching and peace